Hello. <clears throat> busy, busy day. Busy day. Right. Uh, we're looking at Stephen. No, Sig, Stephen. Sebastian Rogers. Because this this case is. You think you. You've, reached, you've got to the end of the tunnel. Well, right? you see the light. And this was, and some else in your way blocks it. It's like a rabbit hole. You constantly go, you're going down, then all of a sudden you've got to go over the left or right or drag. You don't know what, you don't know what you're going to get each day. You really don't. Right, and a lot of information that comes through comes through later on in the evening once I've gone to bed because of the time difference. So I wake up to all this information in the morning. So I'm sitting there for like two hours drinking my coffee, going through all this information. Right, and um, but apparently Nancy Grace does be releasing. A video of an interview she did with Seth Rogers. Now that one I want to see. I'd like it to do one with the um, the stepfather and the mother. You know what I mean? But I don't think he will give her, you know, because she won't take his BS. She won't take his BS. So, I've also got like uh, some information about the Sebastian Rogers grandmother, Robin Rogers. Now, as we heard last night, we did hear this YouTube, right? But with Seth and Robin in it, but seem to literally, it's like you're pulling up, you literally. You're asking for the information to pull at it to get the information because it just seems to take forever between each question. And I thought, oh, I can't take this. So finally, we got through that. And then it was after, or was just before that come to the end, that I got the information that I needed. I thought, I'm not going through that interview again. No, I'm not doing that again. So I thought I'd leave it till today and I'll come on and talk about it tonight. Now, that first interview, which we can pull up, because I'm sure I've got it on my Facebook page, I want to have, I want to show you the interviews, right? And the first one, well, the first one was a live with um the duchess i'll put her link in the description all right so i've got to go right back right 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 right, right back and we're going to have a look at these interviews because not all of them not all of you just small clips of them right So that we can just see how it's the difference between is because the stepfather is still the same. He's still on that same path. Right? But the mother she, I don't know, she's either heavily um medicated which she could be because look you have a son or child go missing you're not gonna be oh i'm all right i'm fine you're not you're gonna be i'm gonna have to sedate me put it that way god come on The same, which is, and I've only had this page just 
brought a couple of wigs. But there's so much. Right. I left them in video altogether. All video altogether. Oh, that the hands. Don't want the hands. That was a creepy one, that one with the hands. Come on. Uh, but that was, I think. Oh, it's like, oh, look what all oh, lovey dovey, look what holding hands. But then when they do a video and it's live and you see the faces, it's like they don't want to be by each other. You know what I mean? And because they don't, he looks at her. He he will look at her. But she won't look at him. Occasionally she'll to look at him and then he'll he'll answer because i sometimes think when she does that because she don't normally look at him very rarely she looks at him so i think when she's asked a question if she's not sure what to say like she's forgot what she should say she looks at him she's like i can't answer this you know what i mean this is too painful i can't answer this so he'll, he'll take over. That's the impression I get. That's just my opinion. Others might have a different opinion. That's fine. I'd love to know your opinions. I'd love to hear your opinion. So, and it's just that she'll only look at him at certain times, and that's what I think. Laptop makes me think she looks at him for, look, I forgot what I've got to say. Perhaps that's what he said. He's probably said to look at you. If you forget what you've got to say, just look at me and I'll take over. You know what I mean? You don't know, do you? So, you know, this one, is this him? No, this is my one. I don't my one. I don't know that. Is it? Who is? Who is? Check <laughs> Right. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Well, he's my one. I want my one. I want the actual interview. Please tell me I've got the actual interview on here. Oh no, oh no I'll just pull it up on YouTube somewhere. Right, um because I don't want to do it for my one because I keep, when I watched that interview, I was stopping it, right? But then again, I suppose we could because it's only a certain clips I want to see of it, you know what I mean? Is that the interview? Oh, this was the phone, the live, you know, I don't want that one. Don't want that one. You know, that was a live where they did the first live with uh, the YouTuber. So it must be a theory. Right. 
I'll find it. I'll find it. But um, I don't want the ones that they're talking on a live because you don't see them. I just want to get clips from that first interview, which is in like four sections, and then clips of the... I don't want the hangs because you don't see the faces. And then I just want the interview they did the other night with another YouTuber. But that wasn't on a live. That was her, the YouTuber, in their home talking to them. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. Don't want that. Right, don't want that. Not that one. Oh, God's sake, this mouse. Uh, God. Come on. Where's that interview then? I don't get this. I can't find that interview. This is so new. Because Nancy Grace is doing an interview and I'm trying to find that now, but I can't find that. No. Not on the site, so she, they haven't put it out yet. So I don't know where they get where it came out and stuff that from. You know what I mean? I don't know where that is because I can't find it. I will look for it, or someone will bound to send me the link. Right. Uh, mother. So annoying when you want to see something and then you can't find it. Well, I've got one here. So we're going to look at this one in a minute, okay? Now, this is part of that first interview David did. So it's not very long, right? Which is fine because I, I didn't want a long version anyway. I just want to show you clips of this interview and what the, how the mother is here. And then have a look at the interview she did the other night with a YouTuber and see the difference in her there. I think she's either heavily medicated because I think she's, I still think she's on the edge. She's going to crack very soon. She knows something. She don't know the full truth, but she knows something. So, let's share this. Right? So, we're going to watch it on here. Hi, MG. Yeah, fancy seeing you here. God, you got to stop me tonight, this. Um, has that interview come out yet with Nancy? Nancy Grace? Because I've just seen Ikma. Ik, whatever his name is. Ik, Ik, oh, can't pronounce that name. 
uh, with a with a live going about. I thought, well, I can't find it. It's not on Nancy's page. And I've had no pop ups telling me about it. So anyway, so this is just part short clip of the very first interview. Part of the very first interview they did. It demo, demo. I still won't be able to pronounce it right. <laughs> oh dear. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So, I just want to show. No, I haven't seen it yet, but I was hoping it would come on so I could air it on here. So, I'll keep a lookout for it. So, anyway, as I say, we're going to watch this short clip of this it's not a very long one and then i'll tell you what i think and then we'll look at another clip of her on the last physical interview they did because they've done something like one two three interviews and is it two two within a news a news uh a news class company organization and one with a youtuber that was in their home so you see the faces and then they've done two lives right which i don't think he'll be going back to earth again okay Who's that? So, uh, I don't think I'll be going back to Duchess again. <laughs> Not after the uh, live she done last night or this morning or whenever it is. Right? But then again, everyone's got their own opinions and you should respect that. You know what I mean? Because whenever they do an interview, you come out of it with even more questions. Right? Um, oh, God's sake, get back up there. Ah, right. It's on Facebook, is it? Right, hold on. I'm just sorting some out, everyone. Hold on. Right. It's only 30 seconds. Thirty seconds long, that. Well, I do hate it when these people, YouTubers, get you all hyped up for these interviews and then they just give you a 30 second clip or not as bad as, bad as Nick Beres, Beres, who gives you a 10 second clip. All right? But I'll put, them on, put that on pause in a minute. I'll just put those up because we've got, oh God's sake. Pause. Because we will have a look at them, see what she has to say, okay? Well, where am I? Screen. Right, I'm trying to find this one. Right. But you're just going to look at this and then I'll just look, watch the how the mother is, please. Just watch the mother. Ignore that other person. She does a good job of ignoring him, so we can ignore him. Okay, I just want you to concentrate on the mother. Tonight, the parents of a, t a missing teen in Sumner County described to us exclusively how they feel on day eight of their son's disappearance. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Marius Pate. And I'm Lauren Lowry. Sebastian Rogers is 15. He was last seen by his parents on February 25th in Hendersonville. Sebastian has autism and he's gone without his medication this whole time. 
And since then, authorities have searched by air, by foot, and on horseback. Helicopters, drones, and dive teams have also been brought in to try to find him. Today, his parents spoke exclusively to our Holly Thompson. She's live tonight in Sumner County. Holly, I imagine it was quite an emotional interview. Oh, certainly was. It is hard for any of us to imagine the emotions that this family is going through right now. But we know one thing is certain. They remain positive. They are holding on to hope that their son Sebastian will return home safely. Can you walk us through what you're thinking right now? I just want my baby to be okay. I don't know where he's at. Mom Katie broke down several times in our interview, but says her hope is strong that her son Sebastian will be found safe and return home. He's going to walk through that door and the street will be flooded again with family and relatives all waiting to hug him, love him. And Stepdad Chris says it's been an emotional roller coaster that all started Sunday night, February 25th. Pretty normal. He was playing in his room um, when I told him to go to bed. He did. <laughs> um, he said, good night, Mom. I love you. Katie says she went to wake up Sebastian around 6 a.m. Monday for school, and he was gone. Within minutes, Katie says she was on the phone with Chris, who was working out of town, and they quickly called 911. And he's not a runner. He's never run away before. Um... I don't know why. I don't know why he walked out that door. I mean, he's a good kid. He's not, he's not a mischievous child by any means. Katie and Chris say Sebastian is not on social media. While he loves to play Minecraft, they tell me he does not have any online capabilities. I asked if there was any reason he might want to leave. We've been coming over that day and even the weeks before he left and I don't I haven't been able to figure it out he's um that morning he was laughing he was joking it's as if Sebastian vanished no sign of him on any video throughout the community thousands of miles logged by law enforcement canines helicopters even dive teams and no sign of him Chris and Katie tell me they've been harassed people pointing fingers at them you're not in this situation. You don't quite understand. Um, I wish people would step back, take a different wide open view and not assume what they know. It's just better to stick to the facts. Are you both in the clear? I can tell you that mom, myself and the father have worked very fully and cooperatively with all agencies across the board. We have Anything that they've wanted, we have provided. What do you want to say to Sebastian? What do you want him to hear from you right now? That we love you so much, and we want you to come home, and you're not in trouble. So Katie did tell me that even... No. No. There, that was like... That reporter really trying to church up this interview. Yeah, I hope she do, does upload it before I finish this live. No, in my look, no, it'll be uploaded about half an hour after I finish the live. Oh, so anyway, but I've got to, I've got it so that once the video comes up, I get notified. Right, so um. These reporters, they don't seem to want to ask the hard questions, such as, you said you walked out the door. Was the door locked? Yes. Well, has he got, a, does he know how to unlock the door? What sort of lock is he? Now, we've since found out it's one of these pin code ones, which you have to punch a code in. I don't know if you have to punch the code in to open it, but I'm to go out like, but I know that you have to punch the code to get into it, into the house. So you don't need a key, it just needs, it needs the code. From what I can make out of that. Right? So 
so after that interview, and it was in four parts, we was left scratching our heads. I was left pulling my hair out, literally. Because I'm thinking, I've got more questions now than before. What is happening? Right? But she was, you, she was a mother who was upset, right? But what I couldn't understand in that interview was when they asked him, is there anything you want to say to him if he hears this? I'd be, Sebastian, please just come home. We love you. I wouldn't have gone, Sebastian, we love you. Come home. You're not in trouble. Because that's like reinforcing something that happened before he left, maybe. You know what I mean? And that's what I picked up on that. I thought, well, what would he be in trouble for? So did something happen on the Sunday night? Right? So this went on for a couple of weeks. And then they did these other interviews. And each interview she did, there's little things coming out. And I kept saying, and I said the other week, I said, so do, if they do another interview, you watch, you'll add more to her story. Voila. Got up the next morning, got the message saying, and you have an interview. So I watched it and I thought, she's added even more now. Right? Like, they asked her, what did you do? What was the day like on the Sunday, the day before you went missing? And she goes, oh, was, we got up, we had breakfast, I cooked, and we went about, we just went about our usual business and all this lot. Didn't go into any detail. She don't have to. Right? Because if you're telling the truth, you don't need to go into all the detail. You don't. Right? So I thought, okay, fair enough. But then when she does these other interviews, she's adding more to it. And I'm thinking, hold on, you're adding on to your story. Why? Why are you adding on to it now? We don't need to know. All we needed to know was that he went to bed. Right? She could have just said, he did, he did go to bed at nine, but I did have to shout through to him because he was making a bit of a noise in his room. Right? But after that, everything was fine. And um, we went to bed, we got up in the morning, and he wasn't there. Right? But she doesn't. And then she starts adding on to this story as the weeks go on. I'm thinking, stop adding to your fucking story. This is really bugging me now. This is telling me you you know something more, but you don't what you won't say. Right? And it's like when they phoned the police, it was a three-way police call. There was her, there's the stepfather, and the police. Why did he need to be on the police call? Yes. <laughs> Why, why does she need to be on the police call? Or he, I mean, why did he need to be on the police call? He wasn't there. He was at work. He didn't get home until sometime in the afternoon. So it wasn't as if he left straight away from work. Because obviously he's had, they've had to get someone into cover because he works on the cranes and whatever. Right? So they've had to get someone to cover but I'm sure it wouldn't have took, what? Well, it takes about three hours to get from there. So even if he'd left at 10, he, he got home about 10 to 11 minutes after. So say he left at 10, he'd get home about 1 o'clock, 1.30. Right? But why did it take that long to get home, to get out of work? Right? Me, if that had been me, and they said, look, we need to get someone to cover first, I said, well, get them here now. Get someone here now. Because I'm going in half an hour. We've got half an hour, and then I'm, I'm, I'm in my car, and I'm going. You know what I mean? This is my stepson. He's gone missing. 
I find the fraud to be messing about here now. And I've since heard as well that um, he was told not to come back to work until this is all cleared up. Don't know if that's because the police have been round to his works, questioning, asking them questions about it. Right? I don't know. So, it's just weird. Whereas the, the father, Seth, Seth Rogers, is talking absence of leave or something like that to his deputy sheriff. And he's talking absence of leave until this is over. So it wasn't as if his work said, don't come back in until your son's found. He took the absence, he put in for the absence of leave. Because he knew he wouldn't be able to do his job. He wouldn't be able to concentrate on his work, knowing his son was out there somewhere. Right, so that was one interview. Now I'd like you to watch this one, and I have got this one on my oh, Facebook. All right, that's ready to go. Well, I have got this one on my Facebook because it wasn't that long ago because it's pointless showing you the one with the hands because that's just creepy. It's just like saying, look, everything's fine. Look, we're holding hands. Now, you've seen what those are like in that first interview, right? Oh, God, here we are. Now, this is the other interview. And as I said, I'm only showing you small clips of it. Uh, hi. I'm only showing small clips because I just want you to analyse what the mother's face, get the feeling as, do you think it's changed? Do you think how she's behaving has changed? I just, I just think she's a lot calmer. But she's still on the edge. She's still on the edge. And she'll look, if she gets asked a question and it's like she forgets what it is, what she should say. It's like she looks at him and goes, and shrugs her shoulder sort of thing and stares at him and then he'll take over and she'll start dabbing her eyes and whatever. But she's on breaking at points. She is. But but there's certain things we found out as well about after this interview. So hold on, I'm just going to go up to that part of the interview, right? Yeah. Look at the mother. He's still the same. He's like watching it. It's like he's sitting there looking at at the corner of his eye. See what I mean? It's like his head's tilted. It's like he's watching out the corner of his eye. And he does this little cough as well. She she goes, she was talking about something. She was asked a question and she started to talk about it and he gave a cough. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, oh. You know what I mean? So let's listen to this bit. Yeah, I can't even imagine how stressful that is. And also, um, like when we were driving up here, like this neighborhood is so pretty and nice. And um, do you think, has he ever like walked away before? Or, like has that ever happened? It's just, no, no um, first time. He's not.
not a child that wanders. He's not one that is prone. He doesn't have a history of being no. a loper, which is common. And I have friends with children on the spectrum who do struggle with elopement with their children. But no, Sebastian, that's one thing. He's always been a blessing. He's not been an eloper or a runner. Um, Sorry, I was on mute. I haven't got my headphones on. I need to put my headphones on. Right. Um, as I said, then I realised I was on mute. Um, they keep asking the same questions. Which is annoying. Because we know what they say to them ones. To them ones. His, his primary areas are like social and emotional dysregulation issues and things like that. Um, he's very smart, he's functional. Um, overall, he's a pretty happy kid. I mean, he's, he's a teenager, he's coming into his hormones. He's angry that he's growing a mustache, but um, for the most part, he's a happy kid. And, um, what are your theories? Like, I'm sure your mind has thought of every possible thing that could have happened, but is there any theory that you can talk about that you think? What I can tell you is with all law enforcement, with everybody that's involved, there's nothing that's been eliminated. Everything is on the table. Everything is being looked at from every, every possible aspect. Um, everything from he got out and walked away and was outside of the search radius before we started searching to the worst yeah. and and that's currently where we're at I mean it's yeah. we're just trying not to go down that road because but we're gonna find him speculating causes problems assumptions cause issues and based on facts of whatever everybody knows, right now, there's nothing and everything is still on the table to be looked at. We just know he's out there somewhere. One other question I have is recently, Channel 5 in Nashville, they had security footage that showed two flashlights um, the night he disappeared. Is there anything um, that you think about this video or sure so there's a lot of speculations about that video that are floating on the internet yeah speculations is did you all know aliens come down during the night that sebastian went missing aliens come down and you've seen one alien standing in the corner and then the other one talking over to that other alien did you know that just listen to what he says about this. Okay, and that is exactly what it is. It's speculations. Now, what I can give you an official statement on is TBI Newslink has released a statement from law enforcement between local law enforcement, state law enforcement, some federal law enforcement, and they have analyzed that video so many times over that everything that everybody is trying to assume as a flashlight um, i hate to say this it's not as much as we would love it to be one it's not no we told you it's aliens it's aliens see all these people on youtube that watch this video that video is on about we can't add up because apparently two and two must make five to in his opinion right I've showed several people this video, right? Several people. And they're not even on YouTube. They don't watch you. Well, they are, but they, use, they don't watch it like I do, right? And um, they've all said, it's they're my torches. It's torches. I just think that one that was in the corner, standing there on the edge, must have thought, must have known about that camera. And he, whoever it was, obviously thought that was out of range. 
Paul. And then the second person who was coming through with the torch kept turning the torch on and off. And it's like a quick burst of the torch, just so she, like you see where those go, and then turn off again. And then go along a little bit, turn it back on just to make sure that, you know what I mean? No, no. I'll tell you the truth, it was aliens. Okay? Right. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, but what do what do the FTBI and all that lot think we are? Do they think we're flipping thick as two planks of wood? You know what I mean? That is torches. I don't care what you say. It's torches. And then they tried to say it wasn't even their common area. <laughs> I think the neighbour with the uh, video, the the, the uh, camera, knows what common area his camera picks up. So, anyway. What did everyone get from those few little clips that you just see of the mother? She's... She's on some medication because she's not doing the rocking no more, right? She's not constantly wiping her eyes. She's not constantly going, I can't breathe, sort of thing. She's medicated up. And I can't, I'm not surprised I would be. I'd be totally medicated up. If it was my child that had gone missing. But only after I've been out looking for him. Yes, a lot of people have been saying that, MJ. Because she don't do the eye contact, right? And with the rocking as well. She could be on the spectrum herself. Yeah. I think she is. But then again, what did we find out, MG? We also found out that this mother, not him, we always told we all thought it was him. Right? But we was told it was she, this one, the mother, was the one in the Navy. She can know about how to dodge cameras. She can know where all the cameras were. And it's a bit coincidental that apparently their cameras they have on their house weren't switched on that night. Yeah, she's in that house on her own with her son. Right? Because he's down in Memphis working. She's in that house all week with just her and Sebastian. You tell me you're not going to put your security on, your security alarms on. Right? I would. My, if I if I lived in a house, no one would be able to get past. As soon as I hit that driveway, stepped onto my driveway if I had a driveway, or as soon as I touched my garden gate, that would be picked up on camera from one angle or another. If they tried coming in the back way, they would be caught on camera. Right? So I think that's a bit, yeah, a bit coincidental that their cameras weren't on. Right? But she's definitely on breaking point. So I say, let her talk, let her talk, because she's going to break, right? And she's going to say something that is going to drop him in it, or herself, right? Because he's definitely got, he know, they both know something, whether it was him, like, did I show you the information I got, right? 
and I think I've got it in my emails. Right? And I read it through the other day. I'm sure I did. But we'll have a look at it again. Oh, come on. Right? And he gives his opinion at the end. But I'll try and find it. Um, what's in my downloads? Oh my God. Right, what I'll do, I'll pull it up on my download, off my laptop, but I'll just read it to you, okay? Because I can't. Oh God, I've done it again. Right, I need to get into my downloads. Shit Shit Alright. I need to get into my downloads so that I can into my folders, I should say. <sighs> Well, <clears throat> come on, right? Can you still hear me? Because uh, I have to keep coming and going into a new thing, anyway. So where I might go to my screen yard. Yeah, that's how I figure out. Everything can always be looked at again and again. Yeah. But I see, it's like when the police are looking at uh, anything, I don't know how many times they will look at an interview. Right? But us people at home, or even if you go to work and then you do the YouTube on the night time, we sit there. I was up nearly all night going through videos and transcripts and everything. Right? And we have all that time to do that. Well, the police don't. So, where it might take the police a bit longer to get this information, we get it within a day because we sit there and we're like, hmm, okay. And we sit there and we're watching videos. It's quite ironic what I... I've got some memes that I've memes that I keep putting up on my Facebook. And I put one up the other day and it's like this woman sitting there, scary eyed, like watching something or whatever. And I thought that was me that morning. I was literally glued to my tablet laptop. Alright? So we sit there for hours and we can go through all these interviews and all these transcripts everything we dissect it we do everything right uh looking at we can go back from one interview to another interview and we do that literally all day long i didn't realize by doing youtube coming on youtube and doing videos like this that i'll be spending literally all day apart from a couple of hours here and there right on my laptop watching videos and look and dissecting transcripts up i did not realize i would be doing that so it's not it's tiring it really is anyway what am i doing so let's see if i can i know i know right right i've got you there Right, it says here, right, hypothesis. The withheld information from the mother is about a significant argument altercation due to an autistic behaviour perhaps associated with puberty. I said this, did something happen on a Sunday? Right, the father said the house was immaculate when he come, got to the house on the Monday, 
The house was immaculate as always, except it's that word except for Sebastian's room. You know, if he'd gone, the house was immaculate, but Sebastian's room was a mess, but Sebastian's room's always a mess. You know what I mean? I I wanna thought nothing of it. But it's because the father said except for Sebastian's room. Right? And then it says, uh, Mom called stepdad to either put Sebastian out without shoes or demanding Mom to call his bluff if Sebastian threatened to leave and lock the door. I'm thinking, I've heard a lot of people saying this, how they, they was putting him out, like put him outside but as a, as a, uh, a punishment sort of thing. Perhaps I had an argument where he said, I can't wait to get to my dad's. You know what I mean? Kids are like that, they throw things like that out at you. I had a friend whose daughter, which is like, I'm phoning child services. And you know what my friend used to do? She'd get a phone, pull the number up on her phone, because she had it stored in her phone. She'd pull the number up and give her daughter the phone. She'd go, go on then, phone them. And the daughter would just walk away. Right, so did he threaten to, did they have an argument and did he threaten to go to, I want to let, I can't wait to go to my dad's because we all know now he was due to go to his dad's. Right? So it's just, I don't know. Just something bothering me about Sunday night. And I think that's where the missing pieces. After they come home from their meal, where they went bowling, then they went and got some dinner, some lunch, whatever. Something happened once they returned home. Right? And they, she, he's had words with his mom, threatening to say, I want to go, and, I'm going to live with my dad. I can't wait to go and live with my dad. Right? Because the stepdad made the point of saying the other night that it all depended on the guy. If you ask Seb uh, Sebastian, depending on the guy and how his mood was, Sometimes he'd say he didn't want to go and live with his dad. And the other guys he would just say, I can't wait to go and live with my dad. I'm looking forward to it. So, and the reason he would give for not going to his dad would be because my dad's a smoker. Right? Now, I can't see Sebastian judging his dad for that. I can't. I can't see him joking him. I swear to God, those cats are mine. Anyway, so, um, anyway, let's get back to what I was reading. Can I move this over? Yeah, I can move that over to there. Can I move this? No. Okay. They talk for hours. Mom fell asleep, explored for alcohol, drugs, RX, woke up to panic that he didn't return. I think she locked the door, not Sebastian. I don't get that. Oh, she locked the door and not Sebastian. Okay. They talked for hours and decided to go on the went to wake him up at 6 a.m. for school story. That is definitely scripted. Definitely. The I love you mum inclusion in your story story is a portrayal. She wants to be viewed as a good mum, which signals guilt. Thank you. Right? Where are we now? Come on. Where are we? And then, did his mother lock him out? I believe, this is what he says, 
I believe they dealt with very difficult behaviours, and it is difficult with all to children with autism. Each child is different, right? Uh, and that the social isolation may have been beyond their control. You know, social isolation, right? Sorry. Sorry, was in their control. Because they're the ones who isolated him. They're the ones who isolated him. He had no interaction on the internet at home. Right? He didn't go anywhere where he'd meet children with his own capabilities. Like, my grandson, I go on about my grandson a lot. Right? But I, I find if we are out anywhere, and I dread going to the parks with him, right? But if, if he meets up with a child who's got autistic traits or something like that themselves, they're like drawn to each other. And they get on like a house on fire. They really do. So it's their own fault. They've isolated him. Oh God, man. The public statement to him asked first by an interviewer, you're not in trouble. Yeah, here we go. So let's uh, suggest, along with the portrayal of how great the night was, that there was significant trouble. Yeah. They're making out that everything was rosy and he went to bed without no problems. You know what I mean? But... The wording is saying something different, right? He's looking at the wordings as well. Not just how they react, he's looking at the wordings. Hold oh, yeah, on, I've just got to go to my cat tag. Oh my god, my cat just gave me the most filthy look thing. Anyway, so uh some parents may not have wanted their children with Sebastian at his own. I can quite understand that as well. Right? But well, knowing what I know about children with autism, I'd have no problem having if I had a child like when my kids were younger, there was being a child next door who had autism. I had no problem inviting that child and his mother over to mine so he could play with my, my two kids. You know what I mean? And my kids would have loved to, would have loved, would have accepted him because that's how I brought them up. Right? Consider, oh, hang on. Some parents may not have considered the stepfather's statement about all the friends who will be present when Sebastian comes home. Yeah. Yeah. I bet he'll love that, won't he? Having all these friends coming in his house. Well, his wife's house, not his. He's only co owner or something. Something precipitated Sebastian going out the door. And this emphasis by mother and stepfather may indicate that they know this to be true, rather than just believing he walked out the door. Yeah, I'll be saying this. When I read this, I thought, oh my God, has he been reading my mind? Has this guy been read, getting in my head and reading my mind? Because everything he said was like, on par with what I've been saying. Literally. Like, I knew, by, by a certain word that what Seth said, used, I knew that uh, something had happened on the Sunday night because of the state of his bedroom. Right? The way they said, you're not in trouble, I thought, straight away, I thought, what, 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 what would you be in trouble for? They're not truthful about what happened to cause him to leave. 
căng không rồi so uh, let me come back up here they're not being faithful exactly exact at least John and Candace, uh, the father and mother of Summer Moon, Utah, wow. At least I stuck to their guns and said she was kidnapped, abducted. They didn't add anything to their story, even though it's proved that there was no abduction. Right? It's proved there was no abduction. Right. But they stuck, and still, still to this day, they will say she was abducted. Right? So, but these two, that I just can't understand where they're coming from. So, anyway, let's carry on. I'm skipping through a lot of this. I'm only reading like highlights of it. Um, stepfather is very distant, a boy Sebastian's name, we've said that from day one, and so is the mother, the mother was a boy didn't sign his name, and I said that is, when if a person won't say someone's name, like if I don't like someone, I'll go, oh not him, or not her, you know what I mean, if I don't like someone, I'll go, no, don't bring her here. Oh, oh, don't, no, she can't come, she's not coming with us. You know what I mean? I won't say her name. Right? Because you're distancing yourself from that person. Given the status of missing, this is most unexpected. It is, because like I said, if it's my child, my child's name will be dripping, wronging, off my flipping tongue. Every sentence I used, I'd be using my child's name. Mother uses we and us repeatedly, which due to the extremity of the context of missing is unexpected. Maternal instinct is powerful. Expected is I, as that instinct takes over. We need to share as is, share our is normal in stepping step parenting language but it's not normal under the, this extremity stepfather is highly defensive and avoided sebastian's name i don't think it was a good no i don't think it was a good relationship between the stepfather and sebastian and we've heard things right but this I haven't come to that conclusion because of what I've heard like in the last few days. I came to that conclusion in that first interview. So after seven days of Sebastian going being missing and they done that interview, I sat down and I thought, no, something is totally off here. Right? All right. Oh. Right. Just so come across Nancy Gray's post on your Twitter. It takes you to a new episode of the podcast. It's brought by Miss Long. Thank you to you now. Okay, MG. Right. Uh, let me open this up. There's my Facebook. Right. <sighs> right. So it's not actually a video, it's just a podcast, isn't it? Anyway, well, I'll quickly read what I wanted to read and then we'll listen to this, okay? Because there's some on here I'd like to get from, to the end, okay? Yeah. Um, expected parents immediately give a physical description including specific behaviours of a special needs child. They didn't. 
Now, if you remember, now when I did that in theory, uh, of some account to police, the chief or the detective in charge, whoever it was, so uh, one of the uh, news reports said, is it, what are the challenges of looking for a child with autism? He said, well, it is extremely challenging because of his autism. And we've actually spoken to a uh, emergency response p person, like a nurse or someone, who's got a, uh, a child herself who's autistic, and she was telling them how to go about dealing with it. Why didn't I just ask the mother? Why didn't the mother say, look, he gets very scared if, of loud noises? Right, they don't like he don't like loud noises. So going out there blaring music out might scare him. But then again, if it's his favourite song, it might not. Right? But if he hears people screaming his name, shouting his name, that could scare him. But they didn't ask the mother, they was asking an EMC or whatever they call them over there in the USA. Right, and that's it. This may explain why why no be on the lookout description from them was the media as well as the wait in a week to break the silence. Exactly. You never saw them stand with TBI, the police, or nothing when they did any of these news interviews. Nothing. No, I'd, I'd be going, can I, can I, you're doing an interview, can I be with you? I want to get your name out there. You know what I mean? I want him to see me. I want him to know that I want my son, Sebastian, back home. To bring him back home to us. But they weren't. And that was something else I found a bit odd. Anyway. I don't know. Now this is like a podcast. It looks like it's just a podcast, like, because that's where it starts there. But we'll see, okay? We'll see. Anything happening? Our magnificent planet is beckoning for attention. And now, with the Dundee Climate Fund 2.0, you can make a lasting impact. Ten community projects need your vote to enhance your city. Your vote decides. Sorry, I can't help the ag the ads. I can't. I can try and go past them. I took a second walk through the house looking for him in case he'd gotten up and was trying to get breakfast or something because he did that sometimes. Um, about three minutes in, give or take, I was on the phone with my husband. I said, I can't find him. Um, he said, what do you mean you can't find him? I said, he's not in that. You are hearing Sebastian's mother describing the moment that she realizes Sebastian is gone. Again, I'm Nancy Grace, and I want to thank you for being with us. The search for Sebastian is on. And let me right off the top give you the tip line, 615-451-3838. Repeat, 615-451-3838. This boy needs our help. Where is Sebastian joining me, an all-star panel, to make sense of what we know right now? But first, I want to go out to a very special guest. This is Sebastian's father joining us, Seth Rogers. Mr. Rogers, thank you for being with us. Could you recount for us when you learned Sebastian is missing? I know it just seems completely surreal. There's no words for it. I mean, when I found out that he was gone, I was just like... I headed over to Katie's house, see what was going on, and he's not here. 
I don't know where he's at. I've been looking for him every day. Seth, what have you been doing to look for him every day? And I know that to be true. You are looking for him every day. This young boy is autistic. He may not, in a scared and emotional and lost state, he may not even be able to tell someone who he is and where his home is. He is out there lost and the Lord only knows where. Seth, what have you been doing to find Sebastian? Been handing out flyers every day. I've been on some podcasts. I've done some face-to-face -face interviews on the news. I'm just anything I can. I've been to the south side of Nashville. I've been to Franklin. I've been to Bellevue. I've been through Henderson. I've been through Gallatin. I've been through Clarksville. I've been through Oak Grove, Kentucky. I mean, I'm handing out flyers, finding out. I mean, just, I want everybody to, to see my son and know that he's missing and that if you see him, call 911. I, I need my son back. Yeah, I'm just trying to get my mind around what you and Sebastian's mom are going through. Because when I go in to wake up my twins, if they're not in the bed, which is rare, they're usually still asleep. If they're not in the bed, I immediately glance in the bathroom. And if they're not there, that's totally out of character. They're always right there in their bedroom in the morning when I wake them up. And that would be totally out of the normal if they weren't there, tell me your understanding of what happened. Katie told me that she when she woke up Monday morning that he wasn't in his room and she can't find him. And I heard that once I got there. When I got off of work, I had a text message from the stepfather, Chris, and a missed phone call. And I called him and he told me that Sebastian was missing and he didn't know what had happened. So, Seth... To your understanding, when you get there to the scene, what time did you get to the home that day? I got the message at about 7.20. I was there at about 8 o'clock. So immediately. When you got to the home, tell me about the state of the home. The home was clean. I mean, it looked like it normally did when I walked in. So were there any signs of forced entry at the front or back door or, or on Sebastian's window that you could observe? No. There was none. Was anything stolen from the home? Not that I was informed of. Do you know if there are burglar lights, motion sensor lights that would turn on if someone moved on the perimeter of the home? No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, I, I'm trying to understand his daily routine. Did Sebastian get up every morning and go to school? Yes, ma'am. What school? Beach High School. How far away? I think it's like 0.6 miles. Six miles? Did you say six miles? 0. 0.6. 0. 0.6 miles. Very close to home. Did he walk or take a bus or ride a bike? He rode, a bu uh, he rode the bus. He rode the bus. Is he mainstreamed? He is autistic. Is he mainstreamed with other students? He's in their Why We Try program. What is that? It's for their, it's for the special needs children where they are doing the same tasks that the mainstream does, but they get a little bit extra time. You know, if they have like 30 questions and then in the Why We Try program, they get like 20 and they get uh, extra time to answer them. OK, I I'm trying to understand that morning your wife calls you, your ex calls you about 7.20 a.m. Would that have been on a school day? No, uh, it was it was her husband that called me. OK, was that at 7.20 a.m.? No, 7.20 a.m. is when I got to my vehicle because I got off of work at 7. My shift ended at seven. By the time I found out to make sure that I didn't have to stay over or anything, then I got to my truck about 7.20 and they had texted me and tried to call me on my cell phone at around 6.20. And you found out about it at 7.20, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, Mr. Rogers, did he go missing on a school day? From my understanding, she put him to bed Sunday night and yes, Monday morning, he's missing. Okay, so he's in his room Sunday night. Monday morning, he's gone out of his home. Could you tell me the level of the severity of his autism? He's very intelligent. He's very smart. He just lacks social skills in reading of people's body language. Um he likes things to be in a routine. He likes to control his environment. 
I am looking at Sebastian right now, and it is breaking my heart, thinking of this young boy, this autistic boy, possibly out in the wild, possibly with strangers he doesn't know. What would his reaction be to that, Seth Rogers? I don't know, because hes I've never seen him have to deal with this. Most of the time, if he's with me, he gets his information from, from me about interacting with people, it, you know? If I sit there and I'm meeting new people, I talk to him. It's like, son, you can introduce yourself if you like. If he does, he does. If he doesn't want to, I don't make him. Seth, when was the last time you can verify that he was alive and well? When I talked to him on Thursday. How often do you see him? I, I get to see him every other weekend. If he's on like a spring break or a fall break or where he's got an extended time away from school for like school days. Uh, when we had the, the weather was bad out here and they canceled school, he was with me. Summer breaks, I get him whenever he's not in school. Seth, whenever you have the opportunity to be with Sebastian, isn't it true that you exercise that opportunity? You are with him every chance possible under the law. Yes, ma'am. Guys, I'm bringing in the rest of the panel. You are hearing Seth Rogers describe the moment. He gets off of work around 7 a.m., gets to his vehicle, and realizes his wife and the stepdad have been calling and texting him uh, since around 6.20-ish a.m. So on a Monday morning to tell him his son, an autistic boy, is missing from their home. And from what I can tell right now, uh, you heard Aaron Cantrell jumping in earlier. And thank you for that, Aaron. Uh, please don't hold back, Aaron. We're not having high tea at Windsor Castle. Aaron is joining us from News Channel 5 in Nashville. Aaron, thank you for being with us. I don't hear anything so far about a, a forced entry, about a window being open, about anything being taken from the home. I understand that the mother put him to I have a question. I tried phoning him and messaging him on his mobile, right? You know, his, his phone was probably in his car on silent. Because when with his work, he can't have his phone on him because he's got all these other radios on him. You know what I mean? So if that had been me, Knowing that he was at work, which she would know, right? Why didn't she, if she couldn't get him on his mobile straight away, why didn't she phone the station? Why didn't she phone the police station itself where he works? Just putting it out there bed at regular bedtime for school the next morning and that around 6 to 6 20 a.m monday morning she says she goes into his bedroom to wake him and he is gone aaron or seth or anyone else else on the panel do we know that anything else was missing such as his backpack a cell phone something he liked do we know anything about anything missing from the home his mother said that he's missing a keychain flashlight. That's that's it. His keychain flashlight. Interesting. Interesting, Seth Rogers. When I come in, I put my driver's license. Right? Isn't it interesting that she's only just mentioned that keychain flashlight after that video of those two aliens planting themselves in their common ground area of their garden by their house with these flashlights? Why? Isn't it funny that comes out and then all of a sudden I'm making his keychain flashlight? License and credit cards, which are in a rubber band. That's my pocketbook. Uh, all of that and my key in a certain spot in the kitchen. Rarely do I put it anywhere else. This is what I'm asking, Seth. You told me that your son, autistic boy, Sebastian, like things in a certain way in a routine, like many of us. Would he have had that flashlight, and I believe you said keys? 
flashlight and keys attached to each other? It's a keychain flashlight. It's a flashlight that would go on your keys. I bet he always put them in a certain place, didn't he? In my house, all of his stuff is in his upper drawer. When the police showed up at my house to look, upper drawer, house key, wallet, everything's in his upper drawer. Cleaned up by my glasses. Yoga. Look, they're sliding again. They're sliding down my face. So there were no shoes in his room. All his shoes were still sitting at the door. Can we confirm that, Seth? Yes, ma'am. Guys, you may think, why is she asking and asking and asking about the same thing? I'll tell you why. Well, now it's just confirmed. I know she'll give me autism likes routine. I've got a grandson. By my daughter, who's on the spectrum. He likes routine. Right? They're not one, they're not big on going to the shops. They don't like walking around shops because I think what is, I found that with my other grandson who's now being assessed for autism. Right? Even though we've been pushing it forward for years. He's now being assessed. Well, he's on the waiting list to be assessed. Right? We have to buy, we have to put, take these ear defenders with us so that if we go into shops or, oh, and then you're out of always playing like loud music as you walk around these shopping arcades. Right? They'll say too loud, my ear, too loud. So then we put the ear defenders on him. Right? Well, if he hasn't got them with him, and say I'm with the mum and dad while I go walking around these shops, I'll take Ellis outside where it's quieter without this loud music playing around in all the different... Because you walk around these art shop, uh, shopping places, shopping arcades, whatever, uh, and you've got all these different smells as well because you've got the perfume shops, you've got the bakery shops you've got them what are that shop um where you get your soaps and your bath bombs and all that that, that triggers my my sinuses that just really does gives me a headache going in that shop this one shop so you've got all that going on as well as well as the loud music going on around you it's too much sensory overload right so i tend to sit outside with them while the mum and dad go off or I'll sit outside with Vincent while his mum goes in and does whatever she has to do. Right? So, they're not big on shops. Behavioural evidence. Evidence of routine. Uh, hold on, Courtney Lasky, because this uh, touches on you as well. Dr. Sherry Schwartz is with me, forensic psychologist specializing in victim advocacy at panthermitigation.com. Dr. Sherry, thank you for being with us. Dr. Sherry, when I say routine evidence, I don't mean mundane evidence, just you know, the regular evidence. I mean evidence of routine. For instance, if I came and sat down in this chair in this studio and Jackie was not right there, she would either be dead or on the way or in the hospital, period, because that's her routine, right? So this autistic child would not have left in the middle of the night without a pair of shoes on. And that is telling me something probatively. It proves something to me. What do you think of it, Dr. Sherry? I agree completely, Nancy. I actually saw an interview that uh, Mr. Rogers gave about this particular issue and how when he was younger, Sebastian, he stepped, he went outside barefoot and he stepped into an anthill of fire ants. And so dad doesn't believe that he would go out barefoot. And so this is, this goes to that behavioral evidence that you're talking about. This is another fact that's very important that we need to pay attention to because this is not something that Sebastian would normally do. And we know this because he's had a prior experience. So these are really important cues in an investigation like this. Dr. Sherry Schwartz, a lot of people may think that means nothing. 
that I can't find his shoes, but it means a lot to me. And I guarantee you, it would mean a lot to any mother or father hearing this evidence. Seth, what does it mean to you? Was he prone to go outside and wander around at all, period, uh, number one? At night, in the dark, number two, and without his shoes on, number three, would he ever have done that, Seth? From my, no. I mean, the only time he goes outside at night at my house is to put the trash in the trash can, which is right outside my front door. That's it. You know, I'm very curious about this. And one more thing, what, what was on my mind? Does he have social media, Seth? No, he does not. Okay, good. I can rule that out, or at least we don't think he does. Does he have a cell phone? He does have a cell phone. Where's the cell phone? At his mom and dad, at his mom and stepfather's. Didn't take his cell phone. Seth, is he like every other uh, uh, boy in America glued to his cell phone? When he has access to it. What do you mean by that? When does he have access? When he has access to like YouTube and stuff like that, he is glued to his phone because he likes to watch videos about Minecraft and he likes to watch videos of people playing Minecraft. Okay, you do know that is social media because people can talk to each other on Minecraft. Did you know that? I didn't know that. No, what I'm talking about is the videos. He watches pe videos of people playing it on YouTube. My my grandson does. He'll sit and watch, uh, like you got YouTube Keeps and YouTube, and he'll watch his YouTube Keeps, right? But then he'll say. Can, can you put the YouTube, your YouTube on? So when he's on my tablet, he likes to go on my, the big, the main YouTube because then he can watch uh, the Minecraft videos. You can't interact with anyone. You can't, you can just watch. You know what I mean? You can't talk to no one, you can't type anything. You just watch. And he loves to watch him. And to be honest with you, I sat there sometimes watching him. And he's sitting there both sides. And I get, I get engrossed in it, to be honest with you. YouTube. Does he play it? I, I think he has it for his Switch at, at his mom's house. But he does not. And he's glued to that all the time. We need a forensic search of that phone pronto, Seth. Because... Uh, I find it very curious if he went voluntarily that he didn't take the phone with him, okay? Because it'd be a cold day in H E W L -L that either one of my 16-year-olds would go anywhere without their phone. And it's not just them. I mean, everybody takes their phone with them everywhere they go. It's like their magic wand. You can't be without it. So I find it interesting. Did the mom have the phone? Oh, I did. Many times I've left my phone in the house when I've gone out. Many times. I don't, I don't worry about it. I think, oh, sugar, I ain't got my phone on me. But I'm not so much now. If I'm just going to the shops, like my local shops, then I'll, I'm, I'm not worried if I don't take my phone. But I don't drive, so I use public transport. I haven't got the patience to drive. I haven't, haven't never had the patience of driving. And um, so. In the UK, you can buy uh, like uh, a bus ticket, but you can buy it on an app on your phone, so it's there for the whole day, right? So you you just open the app up, buy the ticket, and then this little thing comes up on the screen, right? And you just put your phone under the scanner and it scans the QR code on it, right? So I do if I'm going out where I've got to get public transport, then I do take my phone. But if I'm just going to my local shops, then I don't. I must admit, like, I always pay for everything on my phone as well, because I've got my bank details on my phone. But if I forget my phone, I have got the bank card, so I can pay for it with, by using my bank card. So I don't worry if I don't have my phone with me if I go to shops. Because I've always got my bank card on me. Phone um, put away. Could he have taken it with him? Most of the time, I've seen the phone plugged in on the counter on the little bar in their kitchen. Okay, I'm going to Courtney Lasky joining us, uh, expert in children and teens with autism. 
Courtney, you've been listening. Weigh in. Yes, I absolutely agree with you, Nancy. This is a very unusual pattern of behavior that we're looking at. If this child has access to a cell phone, like you said, Minecraft is social media. YouTube is social media. Anywhere that he would have access and the ability to talk with others. Um, my concern would be related to his autism diagnosis and that deficit in communication and understanding of social skills. Um, is it possible that peers at school or someone has contacted him through these gaming methods, um, bullying, peer pressure? Was he per persuaded to leave perhaps um, from his mom's hey, house in the man. middle of the night? Is that you jumping in, Seth? Yes, ma'am. I know that his phone was locked down. He had no internet access. He only had the ability to take pictures on his phone, text on his phone, FaceTime, and telephone calls. Everything else was locked down on his phone. Have the police looked at his phone? Have they taken his phone to look at who he may have been speaking to? Yes, ma'am. Question, where is this coming Where is this coming from, Aaron Cantrell, that people saw flashlights, uh, two people with flashlights around the property the night that Sebastian mm. disappears? And I keep seeing in all the headlines. Nancy, can I correct you? It's not flashlights. It's flipping aliens. Uh, the night uh, that Sebastian wandered off barefoot. I don't think that's what happened. He's never wandered off before. What? Go ahead, dear. Yes, ma'am. Well, we know we got that video a little later. So we just got that video maybe and released it uh, within like the last week or so. But this is from just neighborhood video, like the ring doorbell cameras um, in that subdivision from the reporting. There's not street lights there. So that's why it's so pitch black and it's so late at night. But you see those two flashlights. But what's interesting is where these lights are. It's almost a common area. So it wouldn't be odd if someone may have been out at that time walking their dog or something of that nature. But the fact that Sebastian did leave with a flashlight and there are two flashlights seen in that video. Why do you keep saying Sebastian did leave? How, wh why are you saying that? Wh would you go out in the middle of the night and leave without your shoes on? I'm just curious. Would you, Aaron? No, you make a good point. I would not leave without my shoes. I don't think you would either. Right, I'll tell you something. I read something and I thought I had it saved on my laptop. Right? Now, that theory, that hypothesis thing I was reading, the, it, I'm sure it was on that one or it was on a, a Facebook page or something. And it, this guy said, at the end, his opinion was, right, listen to this. He said, they said those on the phone from half nine till 12. Yeah, talking. Now, it just so happens that at quarter past three, there's, spot, there's lights in this common ground area, right? How long would it take to get from where he was in Memphis back home? And it takes about three and a half hours. But at that time of night, 12 o'clock at night, it would take a little bit less, right? Because there'd be very little traffic on the roads. You could probably just walk to go over the speed limit a bit, right? So you could cut down the time a little bit and you could be back at theirs by quarter past three. And this guy said, then I, he believed, this is his opinion, The stepfather then parked his car up by the construction site and somehow got Sebastian to come out the house and walked him over to the car park to where his car was because that's where the dogs lost the scent. Right? Then quarter past three, say half three by the time they got into the car, he was back at work for half six. Right? He could do that in three hours, get back to his work in Memphis for 6.30. I don't know what time he starts with, don't know if he started at seven or what. Right? Or if he started at half six, I don't know. But he had plenty of time to get back to his place in Memphis. 
the same. Either. Even more so because you're hearing Courtney Lasky and Seth Rogers state this boy is autistic. He doesn't think the same way we think. We have to try to think like him. He liked everything in a particular routine. That's what I said. You have to think like them. I said that. You can't be um, controlling. Someone who's controlling you wants something done their way. It's not going to work if a child who's autistic. It's not. Because the child has their, it has to be done in their way, their order. Right? So, if you, if you say to, say his routine was to take the rubbish bins out on a Monday, or uh, Sunday, I mean, yeah? So he took it out at, uh, I don't know, six o'clock on the night. If he stepped the dad and said, oh, mama said, uh, can you take the rubbish bins out now? He'd be going, well, it's not time yet. Because that isn't his routine. His routine is set times to do certain things. So if you're controlling, it's not going to work. His routine was he wore shoes every time he went out after the ant bed incident. Okay? So, no. Why would he go missing? And let me ask you something else, Aaron Cantrell. Isn't it true that Emergency Management Agency Director Ken Widener has told us that the canines could not pick up a scent out doors exactly um they have not been able to pick up a scent they had a false um um hit but then that did not turn out to be anything because when this when sebastian went missing it was kind of a warm day that first day but after the next day of the search it went extremely cold it was rainy which made it even more concerning because here you do you have this 15 year old who has autism with no shoes on and you know maybe a sweatshirt and sweatpants but it is now cold so they were concerned about hypothermia as well so a lot of factors kind of changed the search as well um but they have not picked up a scent at all excuse me he didn't have a sweatshirt on or sweatpants he had pajama bottoms and a long sleeve top so that's been changed so right so he would not go out the house without shoes i don't care i don't even think if someone had lured him, lured him out the house he put his shoes on because that was his routine he's going outside put my shoes on right it was cold he would have put a jacket on or a coat on but he hasn't. Uh, officials have now been able to analyze home security video from that Hendersonville neighborhood and discover signs of what may have happened to Sebastian. Two people near the family home. And as I recall, it was around 3.10 a.m. that Monday. 3.10 a.m. Who in the hay is walking around two people. Hi there, Buffy. Yeah, something is up with the parents for sure. For sure. Because it don't smell right. As someone said the other day, it doesn't pass their smell test. Two flashlights at 3:10 a.m in that neighborhood and coincidentally it is the same time during which sebastian goes missing which leads me to our guest douglas mcgregor geographic profile or specializing in violent crime and missing people you can find him at the geo profiler douglas thank you so much for joining us a lot's happening right here no canine scent outside no shoes, uh, no break-in, no theft, the phone's still there, weigh in. So if we look at 
if we look at each of these, the no shoes thing, there's a lot of autistic people who actually enjoy going barefoot, it, you know, it connects them with the earth. They like that texture, that feel. Uh, I mean, there's a whole campaign barefooting for autism. Okay. Let me stop you right there, Douglas. Let me stop you right there. Seth Rogers. Uh, yes, he's right. But does that have anything to do with Sebastian? Did Sebastian go barefoot outside? Was he part of Barefoot for Autism? Do you know? No, he's got a pair of slippers that he wears, so he doesn't have to put on socks and shoes. He puts those on if he's going to go out to the trash or check the mail and doesn't want to put socks on. Have you seen him since the ant bed incident go outside barefoot? No, not in my house. Okay, all right. Uh, back to you, Douglas McGregor. Go ahead. Uh, so continuing on with just how he left the premises, the other question I have is the the wording in, that law enforcement is giving out with regard to what he was wearing, the clothing, that he was in a black sweater and black sweatpants. How, no, he wasn't. How do, how do we know that? Did he go to bed in, those, in that clothing? Uh, how do we know he didn't wake up in the middle of the night and change clothing? I think the wording should be he may – be in a black sweatshirt and sweatpants, or he may have those things on him if they are missing from his house. But we don't know that he left in those. You know, that's a really good point, Seth Rogers. What about it? Is that what he slept in? How do we know that's what he was wearing? His mom said that he was wearing black leisure pants and a black t-shirt when, when he went to bed. Guys, I want you to hear what Eric Craddock, Chief Deputy of Sumner County Sheriff's, has to say. Really wanted to come to the community and ask for your help. We need you to search your properties every day, morning and night. Uh, if there's a shed or a crawl space or up under your mobile home or a tarp that's in your yard, check it every morning and check it every night. <clears throat> Look for any details that something has been disturbed. Uh, if there's a shirt that was there today that wasn't there yesterday, notify us. You can really help us by searching your own property twice a day. Uh, like I said, we're operating under the assumption that Sebastian walked off and we really need your help to ensure that he is uh, brought home safely. Did they was even telling them to go in pairs, right? When they was checking their own properties, to go into with someone else. So that if anything happened to them, that other person could get the help for them. Did he, did he walk off? If so, why are canines not picking up his scent? I can tell you this, uh, Seth Rogers, and to you, Douglas McGregor, the best witness I ever put on the stand and all the years I tried cases, and I don't mean shopliftings, I mean felony homicides, uh, violent crimes, was a dog. If the dog tells me the dog cannot pick up a scent, I believe the dog. So I'm having a hard time accepting what I'm hearing, that this young autistic boy just wandered out in the middle of the night without shoes on. Okay, back to you, Douglas McGregor. Tell me more of your analysis. So looking at what the canines were able to pick up, those canines should be picking up multiple scents. Uh, and it's all based on Sebastian's routine activities. You know, does he go to a friend's house during the week? Does he go to the corner store? Does he occasionally walk to school, even taking the bus? Those canines should be picking up all those scents from that seven days past because canines regularly train from uh, uh, scenarios where someone's gone missing from one hour up to seven days, and bloodhounds can pick up even longer than seven days. So those canines should be picking up scents, they should be tracking those scents, and then ruling them out as, a, as an activity from the past that isn't associated with him going missing. Why? But they're working on the assumption that no dogs picked up any scent. But now we find out that one dog did pick up a scent that led to the construction site and ended on the curb, right? Now, if you've seen that uh, drive-through, oh, what was the YouTube, by YouTube, and they went in the car and they drove... As you come out of Sebastian's Road, comes on to another road. But if you take a left out of Sebastian's and go up to the top, right up the top, where the uh, good, where the, the dead end of roundabout, the cul de sac road, there's an entrance to the construction site. Now that makes more sense 
that someone could take him that way. Right? Because it says the dog lost the scent at the curb. Well, when you look at it, you've got the road, then it stops, and then it goes into dirt. On that Sunday evening. Seth Rogers, why have you been told that authorities are searching a landfill? They told me they just wanted to make sure that there was nothing there. Aaron Contrell joining me, News Channel 5 out of Nashville. Aaron, what can you tell me about this landfill search? Yeah, Nancy, so they had got a tip that potentially from the uh, the garbage workers that maybe the trash may have been off a little bit. What do you mean by that? You can't just throw a grenade <laughs> into my mind palace and expect me not to follow up. What do you mean something was off? So basically the, the workers said, they, you know, they had the same garbage truck drivers that come to the house. And when they picked up the, the garbage can, it just felt more heavier than normal. Um, so they just said that to the. Wow. Wow. We didn't know that. We didn't know that about their garbage. Been feeling a little bit heavier than usual. Wow. Uh, authorities so just to follow up on that tip they went out to the landfill to search because that's where the trash is taken um there in Sumner County they take it out there to Kentucky um so just following up on that tip that's what kind of led them out there because you know we're used to our garbage you know the same garbage truck workers coming out there they know kind of how the trash usually feels every single day so it felt a little off for them so that's why they told that to the uh, authorities so that's kind of what led them to the landfill to start um looking around seth rogers have you been asked to take a polygraph no would you be willing to take a polygraph i volunteered told you about that search right they said the police said they only did that search at the landfill film because Apparently, on the day Sebastian went missing, the bins had been emptied and it was just a precautionary measure. No. I said no, 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 because no judge, to A, to get this, to go onto a landfill, you need a warrant, right? No judge is going to sign a warrant uh, just because they feel it, just to cover their own backs, precautionary. No. I said they must have had a tip off or something for them to feel they needed to go and get this warrant to get signed off so they could go and search. Knew it. I'm glad to hear that. You know why? I hold every parent to the gold standard. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of Mark Class. His daughter Polly was uh, kidnapped from the home. She was horribly molested and murdered. When cops came to, he, like you, uh, was separated or divorced from his wife and lived separately. You know what he said when they came at the door? He's like, take my fingerprints, search my home, search my car, search my office, do whatever you want, find my daughter, find who took my daughter, because it's not me. I'll take a poly, I'll do whatever you want. And they did all of that. Of course, it wasn't him, it was somebody else. But that said, uh, has the mother and the stepfather taken a polygraph? I know the mom has. So she agreed to a polygraph. What about the stepfather? I have no idea. Guys, there is a reward for information in the search for this little autistic boy. Uh, Aaron Cantrell, I want you to take a listen to what Chief Deputy Eric Craddock has to say. Listen. Last Monday morning at about 6.30, Sebastian was reported missing from his home. Uh, since then, we've conducted an extensive and, and exhaustive search uh, around the home, looking for any evidence, any trace of Sebastian. Um, at this time, the decision has been made to scale back on the ground search operations. Uh, let me be clear that this does not diminish our commitment to finding Sebastian. This is simply us transitioning from the ground search to the investigative side. Uh, we are still committed to finding Sebastian and bringing him home safe. We have no leads, no details to indicate that Sebastian is not alive. From what I know, I can tell you that at this juncture, the family has totally cooperated with police. 
I'm curious about these flashlights. Uh, back to you, Erin Cantrell, uh, joining us from News Channel 5. Erin, I, 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 I'm deducing, nobody's told me this, that the flashlights of apparently two people were seen in that neighborhood. Was it on Ring Cam? Yeah, they believe it's a kind of a neighborhood kind of video. So either Ring or some version of that in the neighborhood, which I'm in a Facebook group called Finding Sebastian Rogers. And neighbors have posted in there, um, like one neighbor said, if if he would have walked near their house, you know, you have those automatic lights that sometime come on, but that didn't come on. But in the video with the flashlights, you see two flashlights. That's all you can see because it's so dark. There's no um, street lights in the neighborhood, but you see two lights walking towards kind of a uh, to the, the right of the video. But then you see, I think it may be into a wooded area. And then one of those uh, lights, both of those lights disappear. But then you see one person stay away, but then some other person or thing comes back into the the, the, the the camera. So that's kind of odd too, because you see two flashlights leave and then you see some sort of body of something of one person walk back through the camera. I, I'm curious, how close were the flashlights to their home, to Sebastian's home? Very close. So it's right by, kind of right behind the home, kind of in like a common area of the neighborhood. So, you know, like a subdivision, there may be kind of like a, some grassier area. Maybe people may walk their, their dogs, that sort of thing. Um, so it's kind of a common area, but very close to um, Sebastian's home. So these flashlights of, we think, two people were right behind Sebastian's home. Is that correct, Aaron? Yes. Okay. Are you also telling me that there are lights that come on automatically that are motion censored on Sebastian's home? That's what one of the neighbors alluded to in a Facebook post early on in the investigation. You know, there was a Facebook group started and, you know, right now it's flooded with a lot of individuals. But in the beginning, it was definitely more just family and neighbors. And one neighbor did mention that um, if he was to have walked by their home, their motion lights would have come on if he walked on the side of their home. So that was kind of odd, too, because that's why the neighbor said that was suspicious to her, because her light normally comes on if anybody walks past um, the home. And Aaron, the motion activated lights on Sebastian and the neighbor's home did not come on. No. Mm -mm. which is in the video when you see the flashlights. That's why all you can see are the two dots of the flashlight. You can't really see anything else. No, you don't. You see, you see some security lights on on the corner of a, one of their house or who's their house, the neighbor's house, whatever. You see them security lights. And then further down at near the bottom, when it comes, there's more security lights that come on because it glows. But we don't see in that clip, we don't, we see them two walk, those two tour guides go off the screen. But then shortly afterwards, the clip finishes. We don't actually see that one tour guide come back onto the screen. Kind of a common area, but very close to um, Sebastian's home. So right. these flashlights, of we think two people investigation you know there was a facebook group started and you know right now it's flooded with a lot of individuals but in the beginning it was definitely more just family and neighbors and one neighbor did mention that um if he was to have walked by their home their motion lights would have come on if he walked on the side of their home so that was kind of odd too because that's why the neighbor said that was suspicious to her because her light normally comes on if anybody walks past um, the home. And Aaron, the motion activated lights on Sebastian and the neighbor's home did not come on. No, mm -mm. which is in the video when you see the flashlights, that's why all you can see are the two dots of the flashlight. You can't really see anything else. So we just gotta let this advert run past, sorry. Crime Stories with Nancy Grace. Aaron, this ring doorbell camera or uh, something similar, did it ever show those outdoor light sensors 
coming on that night? Not in that particular video. So that's the only video that we've been able to get our hands on. Um, authorities have said they've received several uh, uh, videos and uh, things of that nature um, sent into them. Um, but all they could confirm for us with that video was that was one of the pieces of evidence that they are looking at and they are aware of that video. Um, but they could have, authorities could have other videos that they're looking at, but that's the one that we've been able to get our hands on, which is just very odd considering, again, um, Sebastian, um, they have said that he uh, had that flashlight with him. Douglas McGregor, it grows curiouser and curiouser, to coin a phrase, because if he had walked out of that house, those motion sensor lights would have come on. But from what we can deduce, they didn't. Yeah, exactly. And I've seen the video. And my, my first question would be, let's just set aside the motion sensor lights for a moment. Who, who would he leave that house with if it wasn't one of the three parents? Who would it be? And those, you know, that would be the next step in the investigation at that point, looking at that video. And Seth, who can verify his last conversation other than the mom and the stepdad what he was he was at school on friday you spoke to him thursday night he was at school on friday correct yes ma'am so i know he was alive and well say at 3 30 on friday afternoon who saw him other than the parents from that afternoon 3 30 ish till we find out he's missing on monday morning i don't know who else so i don't have any proof of life between friday afternoon and monday morning I haven't been informed of anything. Yes, they do. They have proof of life because they've got him on camera uh, with his mom at the place where they went to have their dinner. And I should imagine if they've been bowling, like she's now saying they went, they'd have him on camera there. The only proof of life would be Katie, his mom. Douglas McGregor, go ahead. I've been following this search, and I've and law enforcement has done a a thorough job of using different assets at their disposal. Uh, but the search needs to be expanded. The number one reason that autistic children uh, go missing are runaways, endangered endangered runaways. Uh, and you know, once that hits a certain point in time. Statistically, it turns into a parent abduction is the number one leading cause. But based on his age, they need to expand this search. Uh, where might he go? What method of transportation might he have? Uh, and they need to research everywhere that they've already searched within the, the five mile or 10 mile radius because autistic children, you know, they have a tendency to, to hide um, or avoid uh, st stimuli. So just loud noises in general, helicopters, sirens, people shouting, they may hide, they may seek out crevices. That construction site that the dog hit needs to be researched uh, thoroughly. Um, and and this is something that not only law enforcement can do, but the, the, the parents can get together volunteer searches within the community to... Don't talk about the mother and the stepfather. They don't do nothing. They don't get their, out their boots on the ground. Okay, they say they go out and put posters out and hang leaflets out and all that lot. But they've not been out there searching. Now, if I was a mother, I'd be out there on my hands and flipping knees if it meant to. You know what I mean? Just, I'd be moving every rock, every tree trunk, every stone every stick everything right but i was thinking this the same as what i just said now <coughs> they need to go back over that area the areas they've already searched right but go over without the helicopters without the music playing and just walk through right that i wouldn't even be calling his name Right, because he's not been on his mates for, what, three weeks now? So his mind's going to be playing, doing somersaults because 
His senses are going to be all over the place. His routine is gone. So, it might still be local. Might still be local in them woods somewhere. I did think at first, perhaps he, he left home. He walked out of home to go to his dad's. Right? Now, the only way he'd know how to get to his dad's by walking is to go the way the car would go. Because he knows where to turn and all that lot. He wouldn't know how to get to his dad's through the woods. But then again, he don't like getting dirty. So I can't, unless there's a place in the woods, uh, the woods that it would be around by him that he likes to go into. You know what I mean? We don't know. Because the parents never tell us. Well, the mother never tells us. If he, if he ever went out to play on his own. All they ever told us was he'd be out there cutting the lawn sometimes or he'd take the trash out, get the post for him. That would be it. Now, there is proof of life. There is proof of life. As I said, they've got him on video at the place where they went to get the, 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 the meal, the food. And I say, I reckon something happened once they got home. Once they got home, because in the uh, set of said I'm here, the house would be. Okay, MG. Right? Even though it's a said tonight, the house is always pristine and clean. On the first interview, when they spoke to him, he said the house was pristine as usual, except for Sebastian's room. No, okay. Apparently, the police had already been there by the time he got there. Right? But I don't think they'd mess a room up to the point where it would be messy. They'd probably look in drawers to see if there's anything that is took in the wardrobes, anything that is took, any clothing, look for shoes, maybe, any bags, maybe, that is probably took with him, anything like that. But they wouldn't mess a room up. Please don't purposely go into someone's house looking for a child and mess a room up. Unless they're looking for a hidden, like, say they need to get under the floorboards or something, see if they've got a hidden floorboard or a cupboard that, like, some people have these hidden rooms, don't they? Like a hidden cupboard. And it looks like a wall, but you touch it and it opens up and it's like a cupboard or a wardrobe. Well, unless they're looking for something like that, I don't know. But there is proof of life. You search these areas as well. Uh, hold on, let me understand something. Aaron, you told me that the dogs had not made a hit. Wasn't that a false positive at the construction site? Yes, yes, ma'am. But still, it needs to be further investigated. Hold oh, on. That was a false positive at the construction site. So, what are they saying? That wasn't Sebastian's saying then that that dog followed. I'm lost. You know, to back to Seth, you keep saying that a piece of the puzzle is missing. Something is missing. It doesn't add up. What do you mean by that? Something, some, it doesn't add up. For him to break routine and to leave the house with no shoes, no socks on, no coat, some, something just doesn't make sense. I don't know what he was thinking. Guys, I want to give you the tip line again. 615-451-3838. Repeat. 615-451-3838. Listen to Sebastian's mom, Katie. I guarantee you he is loved. And trust me, the open arms are waiting for him to come home. From every parent to every family members to probably everyone in the community. But there's no malice. So we just want our boy home. Bad. 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 That is from WSMV4. Uh, that also has the full 
discussion with Sebastian's mother, the full interview, WSMZ4, to you, Seth Rogers, what are your final thoughts? I'm just looking for my son. I'm willing to come home. I need people to look at his picture. Keep your eyes up and keep your head up. If you see him, please call 911. I need my son back. Do you think he left that home alone? I have no idea what to think. It's not like him. Guys, please help us bring Sebastian home. This boy needs us. 615-451-3838. Right. So what does everyone think? I've got people on Twitter. What do you all think? I've got some people in the sitting in the hedges on YouTube. Come on, let us know what you think. Because I heard there was a false positive with a dog. But then they said one of the dogs picked like weeks later they turned around and said one of the dogs picked up his scent. And now they're telling us in there that was the false positive. You know what I mean? It's just blowing everything up in the air again. I don't understand. How can your dog follow a scent to from their house to the construction site and then finish lose it? Because as people have said, the only reason you lose a scent is if they was carried or they was or they got into a car. Exactly. How did I know it's a false positive? How did I know that? You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense to say that. And when that one YouTuber drove around the estate, cinematic or someone like uh, cinematic, right? They drove around the estate and they went onto the that uh, construction site where they're building the houses. But some houses have been finished, right? And um, Oh, YouTube version is out of it. Okay. Let's have a look. See what the YouTube version. But the YouTube version is just going to be the same as what we just heard there. Right? But we can, I can look it up and find it out. Right? Uh, let's have a look. It'll be on Nancy Grace for me. Come on. Nancy Grace. Let's have a look, see what. Sometimes I like to see Nancy Grace. Yeah, yep, yeah, it is. Where is a missing autistic teen? Sebastian Rogers, The Hunt is on for this boy. Did he wander away from home entirely bare, barefoot? This as eerie surveillance footage emerges outside Sebastian's home purportedly of two people with flashlights. What oh, does that in. mean? I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Crime Stories and on Sirius XM 111. First of all, listen to this. When I woke him up for school, he wasn't there. I took a second and walked through the house looking for him in case he'd gotten up and was trying to get breakfast or something because he did that sometimes. Um, about three minutes in, give or take, I was on the phone with my husband. I said, I can't find him. Um... He said, what do you mean you can't find him? I said, he's not in that. You are hearing Sebastian's mother describing the moment that she realizes Sebastian is gone. Again, I'm Nancy Grace, and I want to thank you for being with us. The search for Sebastian is on. And let me right off the top give you the tip line, 
615-451-3838. Repeat, 615-451-3838. Look at him. This boy needs our help. Where is Sebastian joining me, an all-star panel, to make sense of what we know right now? But first, I want to go out to a very special guest. This is Sebastian's father joining us, Seth Rogers. Mr. Rogers, thank you for being with us. Could you Could you imagine the stepfather going on Nancy Grace? I think they're ripping her apart. You recount for us when you learn Sebastian is missing. I know it just seems completely surreal. Son, there's no words for it. I mean, when I found out that he was gone, I was just like, I headed over to Katie's house, see what was going on. And he's not here. I don't know where he's at. I've been looking for him every day. It's just Seth, what have you been doing to look for him every day? And I know that to be true. You are looking for him every day. Guys, please look at Sebastian. This young boy is autistic. He may not in a scared and emotional and lost state. He may not even be able to tell someone who he is and where his home is. He is out there lost, and the Lord only knows where. Seth, what have you been doing to find Sebastian? Been handing out flyers every day. I've been on some podcasts. I've done some face-to-face -face interviews on, on the news. I'm just, anything I can. I've been to the south side of Nashville. I've been to Franklin. I've been to Bell. You through Oak Grove, Kentucky. I mean, I'm handing out flyers, finding out. I mean, just, I want everybody to, to see my son and know that he's missing. And that if you see him, call 911. I, I need my son back. You know, just trying to get my mind around what you and Sebastian's mom are going through. Because when I go in to wake up my twins, if they're not in the bed, which is rare, they're usually still asleep. If they're not in the bed, I immediately glance in the bathroom. And if they're not there, that's totally out of character. They're always right there in their bedroom in the morning when I wake them up. And that would be totally out of the normal if they weren't there. Tell me your understanding of what happened. Katie told me that she when she woke up Monday morning that he wasn't in his room and she can't find him. And I heard that once I got there. When I got off of work, I had a text message from the stepfather, Chris, and a missed phone call. And I called him and he told me that Sebastian was missing and he didn't know what had happened. So I had it. Okay, let me ask a couple of quick questions, Seth. Number one, is there any type of a burglar alarm in the home? I don't know. I don't live there. Okay. Okay, that is not helping me. Let me see if I can find that out. I'm going to go to Aaron Cantrell on that from News Channel 5. So we don't know if there's a burglar alarm. Was a window open in Sebastian's home, in his room? Not that I'm aware of. Well, Nancy, we, okay. we don't know. We do know that they did search uh, the perimeter of the house. And I know one day when I was out there, when they were searching, they had a dive team out there. They were searching the grounds. But the area is very, um, it's some parts of it is very rural. And they're doing a lot of construction around the area. So there's a lot of construction, lots of subdivisions being built in that area. And like you mentioned earlier, um, uh, the flashlights in the backyard, that was a very common area where people could potentially be walking. It is odd at that early in the morning that there were two flashlights and considering that's what detectives are saying, that they believe that Sebastian left the home barefoot with the flashlight. So that is very odd. But as you can see in these pictures here, it's a very rural area. They've called in teams from across Tennessee. I mean, they've gone, I think, in 
different units to come search the property. They've drained ponds. They're looking everywhere. And I, they've searched about a 10 mile radius for in thousands of miles, just going back and forth, back and forth until unfortunately they had to scale back that search. So Seth, what time did you get to the home that day? I got the message at about 7.20. I was there at about 8 o'clock. So immediately, when you got to the home, tell me about the state of the home. The home was clean. I mean, it looked like it normally did when I walked in. So were there any signs of a forced entry at the front or back door or, or on Sebastian's window that you could observe? No. There was none. Was anything that stolen from the thought, home? Not that I was informed of. Okay. Do you that know door, if there are burglar yeah. lights, motion sensor lights that would turn on if someone moved on the perimeter of the home? No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, I, I'm trying to understand his daily routine. Did Sebastian get up every morning and go to school? Yes, ma'am. What school? Beach High School. How far away? I think it's like 0. 0.6 miles. Six miles? Did you say six miles? 0. 0.6. 0. 0.6, very close to home. Did he walk or take a bus or ride a bike? He rode, a bu uh, he rode the bus. He rode the bus. Is he mainstreamed? He is autistic. Is he mainstreamed with other students? Yeah. He's in their Why We what? Try program. What is that? It's for their, it's for the special needs children where they are do, doing the same tasks that the mainstream does. They get a little bit extra time. You know, if they have like 30 questions and then in the Why We Try program, they get like 20 and they get uh, extra time to answer them. So they're still learning mm -hmm. the same stuff. Okay, I, I'm trying to understand. That morning, your wife calls you, your ex calls you about 7.20 a.m. Would that have been no. on a school day? No, uh, it was It was her husband that called me. Okay, was that at 7.20 a.m.? No, 7.20 a.m. is when I got to my vehicle because I got off of work at 7. My shift ended at 7. By the time I found out to make sure that I didn't have to stay over or anything, then I got to my truck about 7.20, and they had texted me and tried to call me on my cell phone at around 6.20. And you found out about it at 7.20, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rogers, did he go missing on a... Like I said, they tried phoning him at 6.20. They couldn't get him on his phone, right? Why didn't they phone the station where he was working? You know what I mean? And they say, say on you, when my kids were little. Then we didn't have mobile phones. That's how far I'm going back. <laughs> right? But say when we, if we did have mobile phones, if I couldn't have got my husband and I needed him urgently because of something with the kids, and I couldn't get him on his mobile. I phoned his works because I knew he wouldn't have his mobile on him because he's at work, right? A lot of places don't want you to have your mobile phones on you while you're working because it can be a distraction, right? So perhaps he didn't have his mobile phone on him and it was in his car like if I'm silent or turned off, right? So why didn't she just phone the station at 20 past six when the first tried phoning him? A school day. From my understanding, she put him to bed on Sunday night, and yes, Monday morning he's missing. Okay, so he's in his room Sunday night, Monday morning, he's gone out of his home. Could you tell me the level of the severity of his autism? He's very intelligent. He's very smart. 
He just lacks social skills and reading of people's body language. Um, he likes things to be in a routine. He likes to control his environment. I am looking at Sebastian right now, and it is breaking my heart thinking of this young boy, this autistic boy, possibly out in the wild, possibly with strangers he doesn't know. What would his reaction be to that, Seth Rogers? I don't know because he's, I've never seen him have to deal with this. Most of the time, if he's with me, he gets his information from, from me about interacting with people. It, you know, if I sit there and I'm meeting new people, I talk to him. It's like, son, you can introduce yourself if you would like. If he does, he does. If he doesn't want to, I don't make him. Steph, when was the last time you can verify that he was alive and well? When I talked to him on Thursday. How often do you see him? I, I get to see him every other weekend. If he's on like a spring break or a fall break, or, or he's got an extended time away from school for like school days. Uh, when we had the, the weather was bad out here and they canceled school, he was with me. Summer breaks. I get him whenever he's and not in school. Except Seth, for the week. Whenever you have the opportunity to be with Sebastian, isn't it true that you exercise that opportunity? You are with him every chance possible under the law. Yes, ma'am. Guys, I'm bringing in the rest of the panel. You are hearing Seth Rogers describe the moment he gets off of work at around 7 a.m., gets to his vehicle, and realizes his wife and the stepdad have been calling and texting him. X was. X, thank you. Uh, since around <laughs> 6 20-ish a.m. So on a Monday morning to tell him his son, an autistic boy, is missing from their home. And from what I can tell right now, uh, you heard Aaron Cantrell jumping in earlier. And thank you for that, Aaron. Uh, please don't hold back, Aaron. We're not having high tea at Windsor Castle. Aaron is joining us from News Channel 5 in Nashville. Aaron, thank you for being with us. I don't hear anything so far about a, a forced entry, about a window being open, about anything being taken from the home. I understand that the mother put him to bed at regular bedtime for school the next morning and that around 6 to 6.20 a.m. Monday morning, she says she goes into his bedroom to wake him and he is gone. Aaron. However, since that, she said all that, we've now found out that at 10 o'clock on Sunday night, there's a bit some noise coming from his bedroom and she shouted through to him, be quiet, what are you doing in there? Get, to, get into bed. Or stop whatever you're doing and get into bed. Why didn't she go and check on him at 10 o'clock? I know I would. Or Seth or anyone else, else on the panel, do we know that anything else was missing, such as his backpack, a cell phone, something he liked? Do we know anything about anything missing from the home? Anybody? His mother said that he's missing a keychain flashlight. That's that's it. Yeah, but she's only said that now because of that video that came out with the two flashlights in the back garden area. His keychain flashlight. Interesting. Interesting, Seth Rogers. When I come in, I put my driver's license and credit cards, which are in a rubber band. That's my pocketbook. Uh, all of that and my key in a certain spot in the kitchen. Rarely do I put it anywhere else. This is what I use like things in a certain way in a routine, like many of us. Would he have had that flashlight, and I believe you said keys, flashlight key. and keys attached to each other? It's a keychain flashlight. It's a flashlight that would uh, go in your keys. I bet he always put them in a certain place, didn't he? 
in my house, all of his stuff is in his upper drawer. When the police showed up at my house to look, upper drawer, house key, wallet, everything's in his upper drawer. Uh, Aaron Cantrell, News Channel 5 National. Yes. Hold on just one moment. Joining me right now is an expert, a board-certified behavior analyst, an autism expert, chief clinical Officer Will Star Services, Courtney thank you so much. For, isn't it true that autistic children, many of us, like things to be a certain order uh, for many, many varied reasons? If this was missing from Sebastian's home, I would venture to hypothesize he took it with him. Correct. Yes. And, you know, without knowing Sebastian personally, I think any assumptions about his behavior, but knowing that this was not a typical history to wander to leave the house in the middle of the night, um, it is interesting that he did leave with that keychain flashlight. You know, another thing, uh, which is quite the dichotomy, Courtney Lasky, and I'm going to throw this to you as well, Seth. If he was due to his, that is not his routine. This is not a child that leaves a home without his shoes. First of all, Seth, how do I know he didn't have his shoes? This is where the, his old tennis shoes, his new tennis shoes, his mama had just bought him, and those that I had just bought him. His mama had told me another the last set of shoes. His feet were growing. The last time I had him for that, the, the last weekend I had him, his mom asked me to get him shoes. And we wanted a pair of boots. So we went to boot board and got him a pair, a pair of boots. Is it possible he wore a different pair of shoes? I don't think so because. Okay, let me tell you something. Plus, I'll tell you something about shoes with children.
Sorry, I got kicked off. Uh, I'll back on again. Attention to because this is not something that Sebastian would normally do. And we know this because he's had a prior experience. So these are really important cues in an investigation like this. Dr. Sherry Schwartz, a lot of people may think that means nothing, that I can't find his shoes. mean a lot to me, and I guarantee you it would mean a lot to any mother or father hearing this evidence. Seth, what does it mean to you? Was he prone to go outside and wander around at all, period, uh, number one, at night, in the dark, number two, and without his shoes on, number three, would he ever have done that, Seth? No. I mean, the only time he goes outside at night at my house is to put the trash in the trash can, which is right outside my front door. That's it. You know, I'm very curious about this. And one more thing, while what, it's on my mind. Does he have social media, Seth? No, he does not. Okay, good. I can rule that out, or at least we don't think he does. Does he have a cell phone? He does have a cell phone. Where's the cell phone? At his mom and dad, at his mom and stepfather's. So didn't take his cell phone. Seth, is he like every other uh, uh, boy in America glued to his cell phone? Does when he, he has access phone? to it. He loves, what do you mean by that? Like, when does he have access? When he has access to like YouTube and stuff like that, he is glued to his phone because he likes to watch videos about Minecraft and he likes to watch videos of people playing Minecraft. Okay, you do know that is social media because people can talk to each other on Minecraft. Did you know that? No, he I didn't know that. I no, found what out. I'm talking about is the videos. He watches pe videos of people playing it on YouTube. Right. I'm going to have to finish it there because we've already heard the uh, transcript and this is just doing the same. But I have shared this link to my Facebook page. It is on my Twitter account. So if you want to watch this in full, please go over and watch it. Or you can find it on her page, Nancy Grace. Find it on her page. But I don't know, it's just, as he said, there's that missing puzzle. I don't know what, everyone, what you lot think, you know what I mean? There's a missing puzzle piece, and why Why would he walk out the front door? Like, at his dad's, he wears slippers. He's got slippers if he has to go outside, right? To say and put his socks on. Has he got slippers at home? But they get they don't mention anything about slippers at his home, at his mum's. Right? Now I'd love to see Nancy, uh, Nancy Grace interview the mother and the stepfather with that panel because I'll tell you now they would pick up on it straight away how controlling he is i think it's like i said before that top that when she does look at him in these interviews it's like it's like they ask her a question and it's like oh she got what can i say so she looks at him right and then he takes over because she's forgot what she needs to say and I don't know if you noticed in that one interview we did, we did with the YouTuber, Chronicles of Olivia. That's it. I'll put a link in there again. Do you, do you notice that time when he was talking about something and then she put it in and said something? He brought his hands down and he went, do that on his lap. He gave a slap on his lap. He goes, fuck's sake, sort of thing. Right? He didn't like that. I noticed that he, his face was... You just cut me off, you know what I mean? He didn't like that one bit that she cut him off. So, 
these two, how do they know that that, that dog, when they took him up to the construction site, how do they know it's a false positive? You know what I mean? Just because it didn't lead to anywhere but a construction site, so now they're saying it's a false positive. No, it's not. And, and then after that, like last week sometime it was, because it's last week sometime when it come out about the dog, and then that video got released, right? Yeah, I did. When I was watching that video and it first started, I seen that Lego thing of a frame. Right? I went, hmm. I did. I did actually go, hmm. Funny how he's building a crane. But apparently he liked big equipment. So he'd like, he'd like the equipment they used on the construction site. The diggers and all that lot. So perhaps it was just something he liked to do himself. But I don't know. It's just so weird. And I think there is a missing push. I don't know now if he's alive or if he's on alive. I'm hoping, I'm still still praying that he's alive. I'm hoping that they, if they took him or someone else took him, has gotten somewhere dry and warm and he's getting fed. That's what I'm hoping. You know what I mean? It's like, it reminds me a bit like this case where, in England, where a mother was going to leave her apartment, leave him, right? And... She's arranged with her partner's uncle or brother, uncle, with her partner's uncle, for him to pick up her, her daughter from school. And then she would meet him at his place with the other children. But she couldn't do that because her partner was at home. He never went to work. Or something, or he was always in, he was in that day. So, because he was in, she couldn't leave without him knowing. So, and then when a daughter didn't come home, people saying, You need to phone the police, you need to phone the police. So, she said, She phoned the police, and there's a big search going on for this girl. Right? And I finally found her. Uh, in this uncle's home, right? And, um, but she couldn't, but she said, said but I couldn't, I couldn't leave uh, the house then because he'd seen me leaving and he, he wouldn't like it, he'd go berserk, he'd, you know what I mean, sort of thing. She got sent to prison for that. So, this is reminding me a bit like that. Have they hidden somewhere? Have they got him somewhere? Have they got someone looking after him? And then at a pre-arranged time, just going to let him go somewhere. So then he can be found. I hope so in one way. But then, wouldn't Sebastian be able to say, I was kept in a house this, you know what I mean? Because it isn't like, I'll go back to it again and again, children with autism, they like routine. I like, a, I've got a routine, like with my keys. If I don't put them in my bag, as soon as I come in the house, right? And I put them down on a table or in the kitchen on the work surface. When I go to use them again, I am frantically looking for my keys. So, and it's normally on a Sunday when I'm due to take my grandkids home that I can't find my house keys. And nine times out of ten they are in my bag, but at the very bottom of my bag. And I haven't got that big a bag. It's just a deep bag. 
So I have my little things I like routine wise. Like when I get up in the morning, my routine is I get up, I put the kettle on, I have to have my coffee. I have to have at least two coffees before I can do anything in the morning. So if I'm on here in the morning, right, just know that I've probably got a coffee in my hand. Because that is me. In fact, I need to go and get another coffee because I've run out. <laughs> but I've got my routine and it's like my cushions on the sofa. I hate people sitting on my sofa and then squashing all my cushions up. I hate it. I really do. So things like that, I, I, I like to have moved off. And I'll move them up when anyone comes. So they can't push them up and flatten them and all that lot. But now my routine is I'll get up in the morning, I'll have my coffee. Uh, then I watch a bit of TV or something. And then I have another coffee. Then I'll get dressed about 12, 12 by o'clock. If I have to go to the shops, I'll go to the shops. Right? So... Right, where was I? Oh, yeah. oh, there it is. So I can find it then. Oh, that's interesting. So if it's 2 p.m. their time, what time would that make it here? Um, I'll Google it. <laughs> I'll Google it. It's about time we got one. We haven't had one in what? The last news one was when they said they were scaling back the search. And that was how many weeks ago? A week, two weeks ago? Yeah, two weeks ago now was the last press conference. So we need one. Oh, is that from Maggie? Okay. So it's, got, it's from Maggie. So it'll be 10 p.m. my time. So is it from Maggie or for, for Sebastian? I think we need one for Sebastian because, as I said, it's coming up for two weeks now and we haven't had one for Sebastian. But you was right and I was right. We know there's a reason they searched that. Okay. No, that's all right. That's all right. Um, I knew there was a reason that they searched that teeth because apparently they have the same men go on the same round every week i know that they used to do that when we were kids it was the same being me every time every week right and apparently they said they felt that when they got the beans from their house that felt the bean or beans or whatever felt a little heavier than usual i wonder oh i'm going to have to watch that lot uh news conference uh that tomorrow well People have been saying, why hasn't he been charged? Why hasn't he been charged? Why? Now, while they've got him in now on those 60 plus charges, he's not going anywhere. Right? So why rush the, the murder charge? Right? And I think because apparently she's 
she put it on a Reddit site, the door I had, about how her mum used to beat her up and, and hurt her and everything, right? And someone said, you need to talk to someone you can trust, go to the police or go. And she said, well, I was thinking of talking to my teacher. And I said, we do that then. And she was going to talk to her teacher on the day she went missing. So I'm wondering, did she have an argument with her mum on the Sunday night? And she said, you know what, I'm going to tell my teacher, I'm going to talk to, to someone at school about this because this isn't right. And perhaps that set the mum off and the boyfriend off. But, you know, we'll see. But like I said, um, I'm going to leave that here. You please go over to Nancy Grace and watch it there, or you can watch it on my Facebook page or my Twitter account. But all links will be in the description. And I'm going to leave it there and say goodnight because it is now 10 to 12 at night. And I'm going on three hours sleep. Literally, three hours sleep. Come six o'clock tomorrow morning, if I'm still up come six o'clock tomorrow morning, I'm gone 24 hours on three, on three hours sleep. Anyway, so I say thank you for being here. Right, hold on. Oh, God. Thank you for being here. And um, I'll see you all soon. Oh, I've got to go into the chat to my comments. So I can take that one off. Thank you for being in the chat, MG and Cassie Bowshaw. Thank you. And yeah, I hadn't thought about that. How do they know it's a false positive? I've never thought of that. I'd like someone to explain that to me. How do they, how do they explain a false positive? So if I was watching something the other day about Madeleine McCann and they searched for her when they had the dogs out looking for her and the police were like, but these dogs, they can pick up, pick up any scent, they can pick up rotten meat, you know what I mean? I thought, no, 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 no. The dogs are trained to pick up on human scent or human decomp decomposition. They are trained for that only. It's like they put that smell in front of them, they get that smell, and that's what they're going on. They won't go searching up, oh, hmm, that smells nice over that side, I'll go over there. They do it. They are so trained. Um, it amazes me how they get the, how they train these dogs. It really does. Okay, some can be a bit off, right? But they're not off. It's like with that Madeline uh, McCann. The dogs uh, alerted them to blood beyond the sofa. Yes, there was blood there, but it wasn't Madeline's. So the dogs wasn't wrong. They alerted them to blood. Right? But it wasn't Madeline's. Because you get dogs which alert to uh, human, uh, to decomposition, to blood, and some for scent. That's why they don't use one type of dog. They can use two or three different types of dogs. Because each dog is know for their own abilities of using smelling a scent of a body a person a decomposing body scent or blood so anyway thank you all for being here i'm sorry i lost connection a little while ago but i'd like to thank everyone for being here with me tonight Please go over to Nancy Grace and watch this video or watch it on my Facebook page or my Twitter account. Um, so those watching from Twitter, 
you can watch the full interview of this on my Twitter account if you want to go and watch it there. But please consider subscribing and joining us on YouTube so you can you can join in with the chat. And I will see you all sometime tomorrow. And I can guarantee you I'll get up about tennis because of my meditation. Uh, and my phone starts pinging as soon as I get up for some reason. It's like, it's like MG, she knows when I'm up because my phone starts pinging about 10, 10, between 10 and 10.30. Okay, what the hell? And I get all these messages coming through. By 10, 30, 40, 11, all the messages will come through. And think, Thank God for that. So anyway, before I go, please hit the like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment and share. I'd really appreciate it. So thank you. But what I say, good night, and I'll see you all tomorrow.